Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy. And one of the first questions that I got about the Flash Forge Adventure 5M after I did my first video about it is how well does it work with TPU? Well, I've been trying that out and I'm gonna tell you what my experience has been like working with TPU in this video. But for the newer people out there, TPU is a very special kind of filament. It's very soft, and when you print with it, your final pieces are going to be nice and squishy. It's not like regular kinds of filament that can snap like a twig. TPU is a lot more resistant to things like that. And while that's really cool, one of the trade-offs of using TPU is that it tends to be trickier to work with. Because it's so soft, you have to print it at slow speeds. I mean very slow speeds. It's kind of the antithesis of a high speed 3D printer because with a high speed printer, you wanna print things quickly, but TPU demands to be printed slowly and you have to do that. It's also a pretty hygroscopic type of filament, which means that it tends to absorb moisture more than say PLA. And because of that, it could lead to issues with clogs and stringiness. And it's always highly recommended that you dry the filament first in a dedicated dryer box or a food dehydrator, whatever you might have handy before working with TPU just to maximize your chances of success with working with it. So the first thing I did before printing with this TPU is dry it. And before I got the Fitch Dry NT1 filament dryer, which by the way, I did a whole video about that dryer. So if you're interested, you can check out the link in the description, or if you're on a device where you can see the card above my head, you can click on that and it'll show you all about that filament dryer. But before I did that, I was using a food dehydrator to dry filament. I used the first generation Ninja Foodie, which I no longer use to cook in because it has a dehydrate feature. So I put the filament in there and I let it dry for a good amount of hours. Then I decided to print what else other than a Benchy. And things started out pretty good, but then it failed. And after that Benchy failed, I started thinking, okay, well, what could I have done differently? And I think it was because I was printing it too fast. I think I was printing it around 50 or 60 millimeters per second. And as I said in the beginning, TPU likes to be printed slowly. So I decided to give it another shot. Next time I tried printing with TPU, I put it inside of that Fix Dry NT1 filament dryer. I dried it and then I decided to print myself a phone case. But in my slicer settings, I made sure to turn down speed on anything that had to do with printing all the way to 20 millimeters per second for every single thing that had to do with printing. For acceleration, I left it the same. But in Orca Slicer, I used the default generic FlashForge TPU profile, and I set everything at 20 millimeters per second. So this is the case that I printed for my phone. This is the Google Pixel 8 Pro, and it took about six hours to print this case. And just so that you can see the properties of TPU, you see how it's really nice and bendable like this? And that's the great thing about it, you know, cause it allows you to, you know, stretch it over some things such as a phone without it cracking or breaking. Now, this pattern, if you're curious on the back, this is actually the infill that I use, which is a infill whose name kind of escapes me, but it's like Archimedean cords or something like that. Because I wanted to have a pretty cool design on the back of this case. So I told the slicer to remove all of the bottom walls and then I only put one top wall. So it left the infill right here, but only having the one top wall allowed this part to still look solid but it kept the infill on the back. So I think that this came out really good and printing slow was definitely the way to go with this. Uh, it took a while, but when it finished, I was pretty happy with the result. In fact, I'm very happy with the result. So I can just snap this onto my phone. And although this particular case design has its pluses and its minuses, I still think that it came out very nice and I am happy with this. So the second thing that I decided to print out is a bumper for my smartwatch, which is the Google Pixel Watch 2. And I print this because without it, you can see that the screen here, it's exposed all the way around. And if you're walking around a corner and you cut it too close, you can bump this and you can scratch it or even possibly crack it. So I printed out this flexible piece here and then I can just easily put this right over the watch 
and it just fits like a charm. And again, it turned out pretty good. I can see some edges that you can, you know, probably just scrape away with your finger, a little bit of filament that's not absolutely perfect, but for the most part, it came out really nice. And I just kind of like the color orange and black, and I think it goes well. So now I'm rocking the orange TPU on my phone and for my watch. So after that, I was feeling pretty confident. So the next day, about 12 to 14 hours later, I decided to print something big, bigger out of TPU. And I tried to do that. And the result is not good. So I tried to print out this low poly Charizard figure using that same orange filament. I thought it would be fitting, but as you can see, it did not finish, it failed and it failed about halfway through. I did the same thing. It was the same settings, the same speed, and this was gonna take about nine hours and 45 minutes to print. But around halfway through, this is what happened. So when I went to check on the print, I noticed that the nozzle was hovering ever so slightly above the model, and it didn't look like any filament was coming out, or maybe it was just a little bit of filament coming out. So I paused the print and I did a, I did the process of a filament swap just to see if it was going to be able to purge the filament, just to see if it was clogged. And as it was trying to push out that filament, it was taking a little while, but then a glob of it came out and the rest was just streaming out really, really easily. So I thought, okay, well, it looks like it was clogged a little bit. So I thought I could just simply resume the print, maybe lower the Z height a little bit, and maybe I could salvage it but it quickly started to not extrude filament again. And at that point I decided to just stop it all together. And the nozzle was clogged at that point. I tried to take the TPU out and run some more filament in and it was having a little bit of a struggle coming out, but it, eventually it did come out. But the PLA that I tried to run after it was coming out really thin and slowly. Usually when I extrude filament, it's a nice thick line and when it hits the build plate, it turns in a circle. That wasn't happening this time. It was really just a long thin line that was really struggling to get through. So after heating up the nozzle to about 245 degrees, I got myself some PETG and just started to put some pressure down into the extruder from the top of that print head to try to just force any of that filament out. And without too much trouble, I was able to do that. I was able to get rid of all of this TPU and then the filament started to flow nicely and wrap around that nice little circle like I just mentioned. And I was able to print a couple of smaller things after that out of PETG and everything seems to be working normal now. But that is a problem with working with TPU. And as you can probably see here in this Charizard figure, there's some there's some stringing, some pretty significant stringing going on right here in this model. Now, what is this the result of? Well, it could be a number of different things. Retraction settings could be tweaked, maybe. Could the filament have absorbed moisture to a relatively high degree within the 12 hours, 14 hours after I printed this case and this bumper? It's possible the humidity in the place where it was was around 55% um, percent or so. So I suppose that could have been an issue as well. And it could have just been bad luck. I mean, I really don't know. But that's just kind of how TPU likes to behave sometimes. So if you're thinking about printing with TPU on the Flash Forge Adventure 5M, as you can see, there's success to be had. But at the same time, the challenges of working with TPU and the things that can go wrong with working with TPU is still going to be present. So that's definitely something that you need to be aware of. You may still need to tweak some settings. You may still need to do a little bit of experimentation, but if you can get it down and you're dedicated to getting it right, it is very, very much possible that you'll have a better experience than I did with it. So that's it for now, you guys, but I am curious. I want to know down in the comments what's your experience been like working with TPU or if you're interested in working with TPU and what kind of things do you print with TPU? 
I like to print things quickly. And since TPU needs to be printed slowly, whatever you're going to be printing, I think it really needs to be worth it to wait that long to retrieve your print. But let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are on that. And remember, if you wanna see more videos about the Flash Forge Adventure 5M, check out the playlist that I made that contains all the videos that I made about it, including future videos that are gonna be placed in there as well. Thank you all so much for watching. Till next time, take care of yourselves. Speak to you soon.